Our next guest fought each day to survive as a child growing up under the apartheid system in South Africa, yet his fighting spirit helped him defy extraordinary odds and become a three-time boxing world champion. These days, he fights for justice as a successful spin lawyer, specialising in the areas of family and criminal law. Now he's opened up about his amazing true story in a new book called Tough Love, Love More to Do joins us now. Great name, Love More. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank, thank you for having me on the show. Actually, it's pronounced no. Sorry? It's pronounced no. 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 Oh, sorry, man. No, that's all right. My everybody apologies. Calls, everybody calls me Nadu. If, so if you ask for Love More and Doe, nobody knows him. No, I can't. But if you ask for Love More and Doe, everybody knows him. Oh, there you go. My deepest <laughs> apologies, more. Love More. Oh, exactly. Love more. Exactly. <laughs> uh, now, you grew up in a pretty humble town on the, um, the South Africa Zimbabwe border, and you face some pretty serious poverty and injustices under that apartheid system. Is it true that you uh, swam in crocodile infested waters? Uh, each morning just to collect fish? Yes, I did. Look, it was a way of, you know, uh, living. Uh, I'm, I come from a family of seven, uh, and, I'm, I'm, and I'm the firstborn son in the family. So that comes with a lot of responsibilities. And, and one of those was, you know, catching fish to make a living. Mm -hmm. So it became my responsibility, you know, as the first child, the first boy in the family to catch fish. Um, you know, the funny thing about that is... Um, you know, in my tribe, they actually believe that, you know, if if you do good by others, the crocodiles won't touch you. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> How many people have tried to find that out? Well, a lot of people die. Yeah, they do. <laughs> you know. now, now, by the age of 16, um, you found yourself imprisoned and, and, and beaten pretty bad. Um, how, how did you how did you get to that position first, and, and what kind of things did you see? Look, it was hard, you know. Um, there were allegations made that uh, you know I sexually assaulted a white girl only because she took a liking on me, uh, and uh, it was the, the law then was you know white people and black people couldn't mix. So I ended up getting incarcerated, and I spent ninety days in custody with no charge. Uh, and uh, eventually I got hit up with some Trump trap charges that you know, I stole something from the shop. Uh, but the police beat me up, they broke my arm, and you know, they set a dog on me. If you see this scar on my face, you know, people often think you know, it's from boxing. Mm -hmm. you know, but this is a dog bite. Um, you know, um, they almost killed me. You know, and, and I recall um, you know, sitting there in the hospital and thinking to myself, you know what? I need to do something about this someday, you know, and that's when I decided then that, you know, someday I want to be a lawyer or, you know, I want to be a politician and fight for justice. Incredible. Uh, before you got to that point, though, you became a champion boxer. That fighting spirit of yours really led you to that career. And you believe that uh, checking your anger levels actually saved your life in the boxing ring. How so? That's correct. You know, growing up, I was a very angry young man, and, and I guess... It all came from the environment that I grew up in. Um, you know, I, I used to play soccer, and my anger didn't help me because I used to get into fights all the time, and then I'd get red blooded You know, and, and eventually one day I knocked out a kid. You know, after I played rough, and then they got a security guard to escort me out of the field. You know, and then he said to me, "Kid, box. I mean, um, soccer is not for you. You don't last long in the field. You should try boxing." And then I took up boxing, but then. The first thing he taught me was, you know, I needed to work on my anger. You know, uh, I used to think, you know, with boxing, you need to be angry to fight, but that's not the case. You know, uh, you need to be calm. That way you can think. So, you know, it changed me as a person. You know, I, I learned the hard way because, you know, I had to get into sparring and get beat up before I realized, hey, I need to stay calm. But then it changed me as a person, you know, it changed me to this calm person that I, I am today. And I believe, you know, if it wasn't for boxing, you know, uh, growing up in South Africa where, you know, almost every teenager walked around with a gun or a, or a knife, I'll probably be dead today or locked up in jail if it wasn't for boxing. It really is amazing. It's a magnificent discipline. And I'd imagine um, trying to temper your, your anger that way. Um, you sparred with Floyd Mayweather. How so I, I, I imagine he wouldn't have uh, taken too much sass from you. <laughs> what, what would you have learned from that? I'll say one thing I learned, uh, you know, working with Mayweather is, you know, uh, reverse, you know, psychology works miracles. You know, uh, it was, 
I, I remember when um with with Mayweather is you know when you work with him, you know, he always tries to put you down, he'll call your names. So I remember sparring with him and then you know I, he started calling me Jumanji. And then I turned around and said, Oh no no no, try Shaka Zulu. We don't have Jumanji in South Africa. And then the next thing he started calling me the B word. You know, and <laughs> I didn't you know I didn't like that. I felt insulted, you know. So on another, on another occasion we were sparring, he then called me the B-word. At the same time, I caught him with the right hand on his nose, nose so it, it drew blood. And then I turned around and looked at the crowd and said, oh, anyone got a spare tampon for this little girl? She just got a period. <laughs> Um, now listen, you are doing brilliant work as well as a lawyer. You run your own practice, Love More Lawyers, in southwest Sydney. Um, what part of your past do you think motivated you the most to pursue law? I, I think, you know, the experience I had, you know, dealing with the South African police, you know, that incident when I got an assaulted as a 16-year-old and get you know, got incarcerated for, on, on Trump drug charges, and I also think, you know, my dealings, you know, with promoters and managers, you know, um, um, and, you know, they, they're not the nicest people to deal with, some of them, you know, uh, you always find having to defend yourself. And uh, so, you know, I felt, I, I would say, you know, my dealings with the promoters, you know, my past experience in South Africa, um, you know, motivated me, you know, to, to study law. And I'm happy today, you know, uh, I help a lot of people. I work with indigenous people. Uh, I do a lot of pro bono work for them. For me, it's, you know, giving back to the community. But no. Tough times make great men, and great men make good times. Yep, the new Fantastic. book, Tough Love, mm. it's out now. Love more. Thank you so much for joining us today. You are such an inspiration. Thank you, thank you. Stay with us. We've got more of studio.